But we're talking about John today again. We're in our second week of the five-week journey through John 6. And this whole chapter is dedicated to one event, the feeding of the 5,000 plus people. Well, not really that event itself, but what it means. In John, Jesus doesn't do miracles. Rather, he gives us signs. And the format of John, it goes like this. There's a sign, there's a discussion of the sign, and then Jesus explains the sign. So in this case, the sign was the multiplication of the bread and fish to feed the crowd. And now we are getting into the discussion of the sign. A sign, by nature, points you somewhere, right? Hopefully. Shows you the way. Often, we don't understand the sign right away. Like, if you've ever tried to park in the city, uh, I would suggest just going in a garage, because you're definitely going to get towed. The people, though, they don't get the sign. The people in the story. The sign ultimately points to who Jesus is the Son of God. And then we have some more Jesus and Moses parallels going on today. Now, last week, the people wanted Jesus to become their king because, hey, free food. Uh, but Jesus refuses because they don't understand what's going on yet. And it's easy for us as readers centuries later to look at the people of the story and think that they are being pretty dumb. You know, they asked Jesus to show them a sign and then I thought, hey, he just did a big sign. Like, what more do you want? Jesus just did one. How could you not believe? But the thing is, we know the end of the story already. And they don't. They don't know that Jesus is the Son of God. That he will die for us to free us from sin. They don't have that knowledge. So they don't understand. So to them, something very odd happened and they're not quite sure what it was. So they ask questions, they talk about it, they want to learn, and this is how relationships form, through interaction and give and take. And in John, to follow Jesus and be faithful means to have a relationship with God. And the only way to form this relationship is through learning, growth, prayer, of course, and questions. Relationships take time to develop, right? Most of the time, you can't really have an instant connection with somebody. Sometimes that works, but even if you do that, you still have to get to know them more over time. It takes time to believe, especially for people who haven't believed in God before or maybe weren't raised around religion. Some people have that thunderclap moment of conversion or belief in God. And that's wonderful when that happens. But for the most part, a problem with that kind of revelation is that it burns so bright and hot that it burns out fast until the next new exciting thing comes along. Not always, but it happens. For the ma vast majority of people, faith is a long journey. It's not a destination. It's a marathon, not a sprint. When we take time to study and discuss and learn and really get to know God and rely on God in our lives and even notice God in our lives, sometimes it takes a while to notice God, then our faith grows deeper and stronger over time. And then other people will see our faith and perhaps they'll also want to join the discussion to learn and to grow. And that's what the crowd in the story is doing today. They're trying to figure out what they saw. Jesus at first accuses them of just wanting more free food, which could be part of it. But, you know, if they didn't sense that there was something special about Jesus, they probably wouldn't be following him around. I'm sure all of the 5,000 people didn't follow him everywhere. They are drawn to him for some reason that they're not clear about yet. They went to hear this preacher and ended up getting food. They got to eat their fill, which probably didn't happen often. And then he disappeared. So this must have been very confusing for them. And even though they don't quite understand everything, 
they keep following and they keep asking him. And this is what we are also supposed to do. You know, I don't claim to understand everything, even the majority of things. Can I explain how our wafers and wine turn into the body and blood of Christ? I mean, I say a prayer and I hold my hands over them. But I don't really know how. Nobody really can explain that. Many people have tried and failed. Many people are much smarter than I. But that doesn't mean that I stop taking part in Holy Eucharist or that I stop reading books about it or studying it and seeking out things. It's one of our holy mysteries, so I take it on faith. And Jesus declares today that he is the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Literally? No, I don't think that's the case. Sometimes we get stuck in the metaphor, like the crowd today is kind of stuck in the bread metaphor. What Jesus offers is much more than food and water. It is life itself, wholeness, serenity of spirit, community, a relationship with God, not just existing in the world, but living. And this is a new idea to the crowds because God was always separate from the people then. God resided in a temple far away from where the people were. In Jesus, though, God is with us and one of us and with the people. And God comes in Christ to be with us, not above and to offer love instead of punishment, to grant forgiveness instead of condemnation. And this is a lot of information to process, that somebody loves us unconditionally, when so many people in life don't. Pretty much everything has a condition in our world, right? It takes time. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a whole lifetime to understand God's love and to forge a relationship with God. So, next time we're reading about the crowds in John chapter 6, or in the Bible in general, I, I mean, I'm kind of harsh against the disciples. They were the disciples, so you'd think they would know better, but you know, I think I have to, and then we all can, also cut them a little slack sometimes on that. <laughs> They're just at the beginning of their relationship with the living God, and they have a long way to go, and they don't know the ending. We are all at different points in our faith journeys, but we are all together on the journey. Always remember to keep asking questions and keep learning and keep growing. So then the relationship with God will continue to grow and get stronger. And then we can continue working the mission of Jesus in the world. I think that's good enough for now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.